So it's April Fool's Day, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, what are Blizzard going to do today? What are they going to do today? So I was thinking, right, what about, what about if they take a franchise, yeah, that people love, and uh, they ain't done a lot with it, you know? They've not done a lot with it. So Diablo, you know, seven years nearly that it's been out for, Diablo 3, one expansion in that time. Not particularly many updates, if you really think about it, in that, you know, that period. So, uh, they, they take that, uh, community's a bit down in the dumps, you know, and they say, hey, guys, we've got a new Diablo game coming up, uh-huh, and, uh, news to follow. Get them all excited, get them all riled up, Diablo 4's on the way, yeah. And then, uh, boom, hit them with the April Fool's joke. Ah, it's coming out on mobile for um. Oh shit. Oh shit, they did that. Oh no, they did that at BlizzCon. Oh no. Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heal vs. Babyface. Apologies if there's a slight dip in the audio quality today. We've got some issues. It's going to take a few days to probably resolve them, but fingers crossed you'll push through like I am. So, Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice. That is the full name of the game. Now, oh boy. From the creators of, uh, well, what's been called Soulsborne, of course, uh, with From Software. I think a lot of us were expecting a game that was going to be more akin to the Dark Souls titles. And happily so. And then I started to hear stories that the game was really, really hard. And I was like, okay with that. Because having played and completed Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, and got myself to the very final boss in Bloodborne, I was confident that I would, at the very least, with Sekiro, be able to go deep. Ladies. Uh, when it came to this title. And so I didn't get it at launch. Got it uh, a few days later. And the other night I, I put it in to try. And I was just literally going through the starting area. The, the tutorial area. Now I will say before I go any further. That this video will have very mild spoilers. Just very mild spoilers of the opening section of the game. Nothing uh, nothing further on at all. Uh, think of it as the chicken korma of, you know, okay, spoilers. So, uh, I do the first bit where you don't have a weapon and you're sneaking through all the areas. And that's great. That's fine. That, that really kind of uh, gets me excited for the game. Yeah, I like the sneaking. I like the way that you can use the environment to hide yourself. Blah, blah, blah. You can eavesdrop on people. Da, da, da. That kind of stuff. And then you get your sword and you put out into the world to, to start cleaning up some of the soldiers. And it was here that I, I realized that this game was going to be really, really tough. And the scary thing was, of course, I was in the, in the tutorial. <laughs> it was in the tutorial section. Now, I uh, managed to, to, to get through that uh, eventually, even taking out a guy who was uh, a tricky, tricky guy. And then it takes you to uh, what you think is a boss fight. But it, it really turns out to be a fight where you just get hammered. <laughs> where you get hammered and of course, au revoir. Uh, and then it you move yourselves to the, the game proper. The game proper after that. You wake up, you've got the prosthetic arm. And that's when you... You kind of go out into the uh, into the world and, and you're going to do what is going to become the, the the huge map. Now, it was when I got here that I realized that the tutorial section that I'd just gone through and struggled through <laughs> was piece of cake <laughs> to what was to come. And I spent probably the next, I'm going to say three hours... The next three hours or so, going through this this first section, dying, 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 dying. 
And there's a couple of uh, mini bosses to, to have a crack at. There's the general and there's also the chained ogre. I met some people. I got a couple of items from them, a bell and such. She said, present it to the Buddha in the temple. I'm, I'm looking around trying to find a Buddha. I can't find a Buddha anyway. So I'm just going back out, get, trying the general, getting killed. Leaving the general, moving on to the chained ogre, getting killed. Going back to the general, getting killed. Farming the mobs, becoming a little bit more proficient with the with the sneaking and the movement and the executing, etc. But as soon as I come on to a, the general or the chained ogre, pfft, curtains. And I'm getting pissed. I'm getting mad. I'm getting frustrated. Why aren't I good enough? Why aren't I good? I finished Dark Souls 2. Finished Dark Souls 3. Final boss of, boss of Bloodborne. How am I so bad at this game? Why am I so bad at this game? Is it the difficulty? Is this game just too hard? And so I get frustrated and I put out a tweet last night. I was like, Sekiro, nope. This game ain't for me. This game ain't for me. Uh, I'm not good enough. I don't blame the game. I blame me. I'm not good enough for this game. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed because I, I really thought I could at least go you know, far. Even if I don't complete it, I wouldn't actually be that bothered as long as I could go far and, uh, and and push as best I could. But I felt as if I was just not even up to muster. And then I was very interested at the kind of responses I was getting from that tweet. Because I was actually expecting a lot of uh, get good, uh, scrub, um, corners, this is, e this is easy. You know, I was expecting that sort of reaction. And I was actually amazingly surprised at how sort of nurturing people were. It's like, yeah, we get you. And then other people saying, no, come on, Oz, you can do this. You can do this. And then other people saying, hey, look, look re watch this video. This gives some some hints and tips uh, as to how to play the game. And, and, you know, you might pick up something from it. So I was, I was actually really surprised at how supportive people were being. So I watched this video. I think it's doing very well. It's got like nearly a million views, maybe over a million by now. And it's like 20 tips on, on Sekiro. And I, <laughs> I'm not, no shade, I probably take about two things from that video. That could just be me, but I take like two things from the video. Um, how to utilize the jump better, uh, like the jumping onto opponents and bouncing off them sort of business to stagger them a little bit. And um, I don't really remember the second one <laughs> off the top of my head. And uh, anyway, I take a couple of things from this and yes, it was how to actually perform a couple of cheeky executes before you've actually gone into boss fights, uh, it's particularly with the Chained Ogre. So anyway, I, I kind of use the same strategy with the General and I bounce around the rooftops and I manage to get behind the General and I, le I lock on, leap off, boom, I perform an execute on the General, one bar, gone completely. So I'm playing with one bar left. Now, bearing in mind, I actually haven't got the general down to one bar. So then I utilized the other skill that I learned, which was the bouncing, which was uh, if you can dodge the sweep, the main attack sweep, then you can uh, do the jump. And if you go afterwards, then it will stagger them greatly. And obviously, if you get the stagger bar to full, then you can perform an execute. So I did that. And I, I think it took a couple of attempts, but I managed... To defeat the first general. And the sense of achievement. The sense of pride and accomplishment. <laughs> that I got from, from that fight. From killing the general. Was immense. It meant I could get another charge of uh, healing potion. And it meant I could also get one of four beads or whatever to, to go towards increasing my health bar or, or, or something like that. And it was then that I, I, I didn't, nothing has clicked, but it was then that I realized, okay, okay, this is, this is what the game is. This game is about learning and learning and learning and learning. And then when you have learned, when you have learned, only then will you get 
your success, but that success you will feel immeasurably, <laughs> immeasurable satisfaction. And so I've seen videos out there of journalists saying, you know, it's disrespectful to gamers to have a game that's as difficult as this. There should be an easy mode. It's exclusionary. And then I've heard videos on the other side of people going, ah, journals, you know, they can't play games, blah, blah, blah. Just get good, blah, blah, and all this kind of stuff. And I think they're pretty much as bad as each other, to be perfectly honest with you. But I there, I therefore asked myself a question based off, you know, what was happening and based off my own little uh, kind of like five hour now, probably five hour journey so far into Sekiro. Uh, is this game too hard? Does this game exclude people? Uh, do people just need to get better and get good? And what I came to in a conclusion was if you added, for instance, an easy mode into Sekiro, would it affect the game? Because the version that you're playing now, the, the, the level that you currently play on is actually the easiest level that you can get. You can actually make the game harder by doing something later on. And the conclusion that I came to with just my smallest of small victories was if you gave a game like Sekiro an easy mode, you will actually destroy the heart of the game. You will destroy what the game is actually about. It's not about immediate gratification. It is about toil. And you feel that with the... <laughs> Uh, the shinobi way but it is about learning it's about learning a path it's about learning how to utilize your skills it's a, really about uh, working out bosses listening overhearing eavesdropping picking out pieces of information using that information and when i actually managed to defeat the general had a few stabs again at the ogre chained ogre didn't have any success but I found the Buddha in the temple. <laughs> so I prayed to the Buddha and now I've gone to a whole new area. And now I've got a new area that's opened up to me and I'm further into the game. And it's hasn't clicked in terms of combat quite yet. But things are starting to change. So to just get a little bit more specific. Is Sekiro too hard? No, no, it's exceptionally hard, but it's doable. It just requires a lot of time, a lot of patience, but the reward that you get from putting that into the game is fantastic. So there we go. I will pursue this game further. I will try and get deeper into it. And uh, who knows what other information I may impart on you later on. But I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. And also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.